Hello, this is Sarah Gutterman. I am the CEO of Green Builder Media, and I'd like to welcome you again to our webinar on indoor air quality. Really happy to have you here. We know that time is your most precious commodity, so um, we uh, are looking forward to delving into uh, the data and the insights that we have collected through our suite of market intelligence and data services that we call Cognition Smart Data. I'm going to start by giving you a little bit of context about Cognition Smart Data so that you can understand how we have collected the data and the insights about indoor air quality that we're going to present today. And then we'll shift into some key housing market uh, information and just high level findings. And then uh, we'll go, uh, we'll do a deep dive into IAQ and uh, some of the, the market drivers that we are seeing there that's really um, corresponding with this explosion of interest in health and wellness and good indoor air quality. So to start with, uh, I think most of you are familiar with Green Builder Media, but uh, for those of you who aren't, um, Green Builder Media is the nation's leading media company focused on green building and sustainable living. Uh, we've been around for about 15 years, uh, founded the company to affect positive change within and beyond the building industry. Today, we have a variety of different business initiatives, starting, of course, with our media and communications channels. We have a really robust spectrum of online, mobile, digital, social, and print media, very sophisticated content marketing offerings that are specifically designed for lead gen and earn PR. Our flagship publication, Green Builder Magazine, just won best trade publication for the seventh year in a row. We're really proud of that. Um, through our media and communications channels, we reach a hybrid trade and consumer audience. On the trade side, we reach about 200,000 of the most progressive building professionals across the U.S., and we also reach millions of early adopter and first mover consumers. To augment our media channels, we do demonstration projects around the country, we host live events, and then certainly, last but not least, we have Cognition Smart Data. A couple of years ago, um, we started looking at the world of data, and we came to understand that in order to remain relevant uh, and meaningful and to deliver optimized services to our clients and sponsors and advertisers and partners, um, we really had to step up our game with respect to data and insights. Um, in 2014, we actually developed and launched a sophisticated technology platform that tracks metadata on our audience, those trade professionals and consumers that I mentioned earlier. Um, so we're able to track their uh, engagement patterns, preferences, um, some very deep user-specific information uh, when they respond to surveys and calls to actions, et cetera. But we realized that in order to, again, be uh, the most meaningful and relevant uh, partner that we could be, we really needed to look beyond our own audience into kind of a wider and broader swath of uh, you know, the general marketplace. And so we found some former IBM Watson guys to build us a proprietary technology platform using the logic of Watson and artificial intelligence to mine web and social media content using contextual filters that we uh, taught to that platform. And so what we're able to do with Cognition Smart Data is look across the entire web and social media for things like uh, market drivers, uh, keywords, uh, purchasing patterns. Uh, we're able to segment that into different audience segments and really look at macro trends as well as micro and very granular data, again, within geographic markets, audience segments, sectors, um, topic areas, et cetera. Uh, we're then able to marry that with our very user-specific data that I just mentioned in order to get a really comprehensive view of uh, the marketplace in general. So as I mentioned, we collect data in two different ways. Uh, one that offers a very uh, thorough view of the entire marketplace using web and social media content. And then uh, we augment that with our very vertical user-specific data uh, from a leading-edge progressive audience 
uh, again, to give us this very comprehensive view of uh, the marketplace in general, as well as uh, things like purchasing patterns, market drivers, behavioral um, preferences and patterns, et cetera. <clears throat> so uh, here are just some <laughs> charts and graphs of the tool itself uh, to, again, just give you a little context on cognition and, on cognition and how we collect this data. And then what we do with the data, we don't just deliver data itself, raw data to our clients, but rather we turn the data into insights using our unique domain expertise in sustainability, in working with a leading edge audience. And we help turn those insights into actionable and meaningful business recommendations um, so that our clients can make more informed business decisions. Um, we can then turn that also into custom content, content marketing, uh, et cetera, and deploy those through our channels um, to uh, deliver ROIs and very specific KPIs. So again, I just wanted to go through that to give you some context about cognition so that you can understand how we're collecting this data and where it's coming from. So now let's get to uh, the meat and the bones of, the, uh, of today's webinar. I'm going to start with uh, some key housing market trends that we are following through cognition um, that are relevant specifically to indoor air quality, even though they might not seem so right up front. Um, the first general market trend that we're tracking is this exploding demand for healthy homes, and you've probably already recognized that if you're on this webinar. Um, so we are absolutely tracking um, an incredible increase in interest in wellness and indoor air quality, and that's being driven primarily by uh, the interest within the boomer and the Gen X uh, segments in aging gracefully. So the boomers themselves are aging, the Gen Xers, they're aging, but also their parents are aging. And so we're seeing a lot of movement in uh, terms of healthy living, wellness with respect to aging in place, um, assisted living technologies, et cetera. And then of course the younger generations, millennials and Gen Z are driving the demand for healthy homes and wellness and indoor air quality because they have this inherent and innate environmental ethic that looks, um, that, that's really uh, demanding uh, sustainability and greater health and wellness within their homes and decision-making processes. We're also seeing this rapid transformation to net zero energy. So this is driven by a combination of uh, innovation in product systems, technologies, renewables, efficiency, automation technologies, combined with enhanced codes, regulations, programs, and policies that are kind of together creating this perfect storm for this transformation to net zero. Uh, the global market is exploding. We're talking about huge numbers here in terms of market opportunity, as well as investments in energy efficiency. And uh, what we're seeing is the massive adoption of renewables uh, and these innovative technologies and, and products and systems are moving us towards full electrification. We're starting to see that in California and New York, uh, which are generally the harbingers of what's going to happen throughout the rest of the country. Um, and then demand-side energy management programs, along with uh, the investment in energy efficiency and renewables uh, is really heating up as well. Now, while you might be scratching your head saying, well, why does this have to do with indoor air quality? What we're seeing is that none of these things exist in a vacuum, net zero, renewables, connected living technologies, indoor air quality. And there's an opportunity to be very creative if you're in the IAQ space to partner with and to look at some of the movement that's happening in the energy and also in the water space and to create uh, partnerships, collaborations, either with complementary manufacturers or, and or to look at, for example, demand-side energy management programs, which oftentimes are being uh, created and deployed by utilities or some kind of a combination of utility and municipality uh, partnership. So if uh, if manufacturers and folks are creative, uh, there's a lot of opportunity to drive IAQ through some untraditional channels. We're also seeing 
major movement in water. Um, you know, to a certain extent, we've kind of already solved for energy in terms of efficiency and renewables. So water is one of the most important topics of our moment to solve for, along with IAQ. Um, and water has the potential to be a major mitigating factor in the built environment because if there's no water, there will be no permits. Um, and so look for enhanced water policy programs, mandates, and also increased water pricing. Um, we're doing a webinar on water next week. Uh, we encourage you to come to that as well if you want to learn more about water. And then we're also seeing a transformation of the valuation metric, which is shifting from first cost to full cost. And that's because green homes and buildings have proven that they yield a meaningful ROI with respect to lowering ongoing operating and maintenance costs. Um, we're seeing that uh, green homes and buildings um, are selling faster for higher prices, they have a higher resale value, and frankly, our changing climate and resiliency demands are really forcing the issue and increasing uh, demand for uh, sustainable, greener, healthier structures as well. So all of that plays into uh, indoor air quality as a key element along with energy and water um, in terms of understanding what health and sustainability means to the value of our homes. And fortunately, uh, that conversation is changing pretty quickly in terms of what a proper valuation metric means as opposed to just lowest uh, upfront cost or price per square foot. Um, going on with additional housing market trends that we're tracking, um, the market pull. Consumers are now playing a central role in purchasing, and this has changed over the course of the last 15 years uh, that we've been around and polling our trade and consumer uh, audience. Um, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, our building professional audience and our consumer audience uh, would say that consumers specify products maybe 10 to 15 percent of the time, and that was usually around appliances and uh, fixtures and finishes. Uh, now, as you can see, that um, that number uh, has exploded in terms of the engagement and the involvement that consumers have in specifying brands, and it really goes beyond the traditional or, or historical categories. Um, into things like insulation and windows and um, a variety of different categories in the homes. Um, we're also seeing that now really over half of consumers uh, are looking for a net zero energy home and they're willing to spend a, a good deal of money in energy efficiency and healthy home features. Um, and they are putting their money where their mouth is with respect to saving money on energy maintenance and operations, keeping their families healthy and safe, and streamlining daily chores and routines. And that really comes down to smart home technologies and connected living. So there's really a whole market um, opportunity here uh, that has established itself already and is continuing to grow and to expand. And then, of course, the market push with respect to building professionals using sustainability as a differentiator to enhance the value that they can provide to their home buyers to increase their revenues um, and to drive innovation and integrate services, especially for contractors. Uh, we're seeing integration of, let's say, um, installers and contractors that maybe used to just install insulation are now looking at water conservation and indoor air quality devices. Um, certainly the evolving ecosystem of smart home technologies, those contractors are integrating with solar installers, et cetera. Um, so there's a, a lot of transformation that's happening as well in uh, the building professional space. Moving on into indoor air quality trends, um, just first some high level trends. Uh, we're seeing that uh, indoor air quality is quickly shifting from a nice to have to a must have across many consumer audiences. And interestingly, we're seeing some of our consumer, again, these are early adopter and first mover consumers, they're committed to sustainable and healthy living. So they're telling us that indoor air quality has become as important as location uh, when making their purchasing and home buying decisions. This is really important because, you know, for decades, 
uh, it's all been about location, location, location. But again, uh, that metric, the decision-making process is changing among a variety of different consumer segments and audience groups um, where healthy homes and indoor air quality uh, is really, um, you know, rising quickly to the top of the list as a must-have. Um, one thing I do want to point out is that there is a discrepancy between uh, healthy homes and sustainability within consumers' minds. And oftentimes, sustainability is related to things like energy efficiency, water conservation, durability, and resiliency, uh, whereas indoor air quality is kind of more in a bucket of health and wellness. Um, so when addressing the topic of indoor air quality, um, we find that manufacturers and builders are more successful uh, talking about IAQ within the context of health and wellness, and not so much necessarily within that context of sustainability, even though both uh, are really important to uh, home buyers and to um, a variety of different uh, audience segments. But there are subtle uh, perceptions of the two. Um, with that said, IAQ, and we'll show a graph uh, with these results, IAQ is the top category that consumers and building professionals identify with green building. Um, over 25% of our building professional survey respondents in a reader survey that we just recently did reported that their customers are inquiring about IAQ often or very often. And note that we're going from zero to 25% in a very short time frame. Um, and same thing with uh, the fact that not only are these customers inquiring about IAQ, but they're actually purchasing products and devices and technologies that address IAQ and actually help to improve IAQ. Uh, on the commercial space, um, and we're really focusing more on residential here, but just as a, a few notes, on the commercial space, indoor air quality is now part of facility management plans, mandated in certain areas, or at least um, uh, incorporated into uh, building design and ongoing operations, which is really driving adoption in the commercial space. Uh, we're going to see a tremendous amount of movement with respect to code standards, rating systems, and programs across the country that address IAQ. We'll show some more information in a minute uh, that shows uh, some initial uh, codes that address IAQ uh, that will likely be included in the 2021 code cycle changes. And then, of course, this rapidly growing demand for healthy IAQ is placing new demands on building professionals, but also opening up opportunities for manufacturers. So uh, to us, uh, there's a really ripe opportunity here for building professionals and manufacturers alike to plan for uh, this explosion in IAQ. So let's get down to some of the very specific data that we're collecting through Cognition. I referenced this chart just a minute ago. When, we've, when we polled our building professional audience um, and also our consumer audience across the board, uh, all audience segments, when we asked them what they correlate green building with, indoor air quality, as you can see, is number one, followed closely by best building and design practices and quality construction. Um, so as health and wellness continue to drive demand for more sustainable homes, uh, clearly IAQ is moving beyond early adopter and first mover audiences into the mainstream. So a tremendous uh, opportunity to leverage this exploding interest in healthy homes. Uh, one uh, note to point out though, um, as IAQ continues to grow in demand, uh, we're also seeing a corresponding interest in proof points and data points, certifications, um, EPDs, et cetera, things that uh, prove out the efficacy of IAQ product systems and technologies. So if you are a manufacturer that is um, uh, creating and uh, offering IAQ-related products and technologies, it's important to note that these certifications and the proof points will continue to um, uh, become more and more important. <clears throat> Home buyers, you know, they care about IAQ. So this is actually a consumer survey. Um, and as you can see, uh, almost 90% of our consumer audience uh, responded that 
IAQ is either extremely important or very important to them. Um, and again, those numbers continue to grow. When we ask those same consumers what their top IAQ priority is, why they care about IAQ, uh, clearly the, the number one answer by far is that they want to keep themselves and their family healthy. Um, so we're just kind of offering these as reference points for some positive messaging that manufacturers can use when talking about IAQ and products related to IAQ. Uh, allergies, um, you know, kind of far down the, the list, <laughs> far a distant second to just keeping uh, families healthy, but certainly uh, addressing allergy concerns and keeping homes comfortable uh, are also factors of consideration. When we asked our consumer audience uh, what they deploy in their homes to improve their IAQ, um, number one answer was non-toxic materials and finishes, and then ventilation and fresh air exchange was a very close second. Um, we're starting to see more and more um, responses that consumers are using products that actively remove toxins from the air, uh, as well as, um, you know, certainly the smart home uh, device monitoring. Uh, monitoring was not included in this question, but in other uh, survey questions and points of reference, uh, sensors and monitors are just exploding in terms of adoption, and we'll we'll get to more of that in just a minute. Now we're shifting to a, uh, excuse me, a building professional survey. We asked our uh, builders and, and building professional audiences how often their customers, the home buyers, ask about IAQ. And you can see that about 26% of building professional respondents said that their customers ask about IAQ very often or often. About 38% indicated that they sometimes ask about IAQ. What's important here again is to realize that these numbers went from zero to uh, these, you know, growing percentages, and they are continuing to grow, you know, month after month, year after year. So we're going from zero here. We're not starting at high levels and going down. We're starting at zero and going up. Um, so clearly, uh, health and wellness are rapidly growing uh, areas of interest that. Um, have shifted into the mainstream. There's a substantial opportunity to create products and messaging that address market movement towards healthier home. Um, and again, we, we want to just point out the proof points and the verifiable claims uh, are going to continue to, to be more important <clears throat> in this segment. And uh, it's not just that home buyers and homeowners are asking about IAQ, they're also investing in IAQ. So what this chart shows is that about a quarter of consumers, according to our building professional respondents, have very often or often purchased devices, um, and about 42% sometimes purchased devices and products to improve indoor air quality. So again, very large and growing white space here uh, to um, address uh, product demand. Now let's shift to purchase dr drivers within the indoor air quality space. So we, we follow and we track purchase drivers through cognition. Um, as you can see, comfort is the leading purchase driver that we track through cognition with respect to indoor air quality. Um, other you know, close followers are security, sustainability, quality, wellness, and energy efficiency. Um, and so across all audience segments, when we, when we segment out the different uh, audience segments and we look at uh, audience segments ranging from on the trade side, progressive builders, production builders, commercial contractors, architects, building scientists, uh, solar professionals, et cetera, on the consumer side, we look at millennials and DIY consumers and active adults, et cetera. And um, we can look at a lot of different uh, audience segments. Um, so with respect to IAQ, uh, DIY consumers are the most uh, active um, to talk about and write about in blogs and social media uh, and on websites, uh, product reviews, et cetera. They're the most uh, active in terms of talking about IAQ related purchase drivers. So um, if you are looking for elevated web and social media engagement, uh, it's good to focus on those DIY consumers if you're talking about IAQ because those are the folks that are talking about IAQ the most. 
Um, here is a chart on the upper left. I'm taking a snapshot in time. I've listed uh, some of the audience segments on the left uh, that we're tracking, and then you can see different pr uh, purchase drivers, some of the leading purchase drivers across the top there. Um, and again, this is just to kind of show uh, the um, DIY consumers, which is that fourth uh, row down, and how frequently they're talking about these DIY-related purchase drivers. Um, HVAC contractors, interestingly, are also talking uh, a lot about IAQ-related purchase drivers. So again, just to give a little insight into target audiences that are chattering a lot uh, on the web and on social media. We're also looking at keywords with respect to IAQ, so heater, HVAC, smart thermostat, ventilation. These are some of the leading keywords uh, that audience segments are talking about with respect to IAQ. We also track a variety of brands in the IAQ space. Some are HVAC uh, companies, some are uh, ventilation fan, companies, some are IAQ monitoring uh, technologies and devices, um, and you can see uh, Carrier is you know, clearly the leading brand right now in the IAQ space, followed by uh, Delta, Panasonic, Mitsubishi, and Lennox. Uh, we look at active geographic markets, so here's um, a chart that shows uh, where IAQ content is being read and picked up across the country. So as you can see, you know, pretty good concentration across the country, some hot markets. Um, and you can see on the left there a list of uh, what those hot markets are. I wouldn't say that there are any huge surprises in there. I think, you know, there's a lot in there, Denver, Chicago, Atlanta, LA, New York, um, you know, DC, San Francisco that uh, that are uh, you know some more some of the more progressive um, markets that uh, that certainly um, have a focus on on IAQ. And then this slide shows uh, the actual it shows growth in um, searches for IAQ. So uh, the first slide I just showed you was uh, content pickup, uh, which markets are reading the most about. IAQ, whereas these are the markets that are actually um, engaging in searches uh, the most for indoor air quality is uh, the blue uh, map on the left, and then just IAQ is the red map on the right. When we look at the keywords that people are, are searching for and queries, um, IAQ sensors and monitoring systems by far right now are the leading keyword and kind of key phrase uh, that we're tracking through cognition. But some of the other ones that are um, you know, really prevalent include comfortable and optimal indoor humidity, uh, specifically related to summer, <laughs> the summertime and summer, summer temperatures, probably not surprisingly, um, especially along the East Coast and, and Southeast. Um, of course, allergies, respiratory problems, mold, uh, comfort, again, there's that word comfort, really a leading uh, driver in the IAQ space, uh, filtration, fresh air and air exchange, VOCs, et cetera, um, air quality testing, and then air purifying plants, um, not plants as in a manufacturing facility, but plants literally as in what home, you know, house plants can I bring in to help improve my IAQ. Um, because sensors and monitoring systems were just so far ahead of everything else, as we looked at keywords in cognition, I wanted to just take a minute and linger here. Um, what people are talking about and requesting with respect to sensors and monitoring systems um, are, one, the real-time observation and reporting capabilities, and that's for both new and retrofit homes. Um, they're also looking for proactive systems, so they want alerts and notifications, and interconnectivity, interoperability with other types of devices and products and mechanical systems. So, for example, IAQ monitoring systems that um, can sense uh, that there are toxins or um, uh, VOCs, CO2, et cetera, dust 
in your home and can kick on a vent fan or uh, an ERV or your HVAC system. Um, or even, um, you know, we're starting to see more and more chatter around opening windows for fresh air exchange. Um, but uh, those proactive systems that um, kind of optimize the IAQ on their own without even requiring human involvement and engagement. So shifting to what we at Green Builder Media call the intuitive home uh, that learns occupants' behavior and preferences and acts accordingly without even, you know, me having to set my smart home system or just programming, programming in up front. Um, my desired IAQ goals or energy efficiency goals, and then the home system responds accordingly. Uh, again, huge demand, huge opportunity. Um, with respect to IAQ sensors and monitoring systems, um, some of the most commonly referenced applications, so applications that uh, consumers in general are looking for, include uh, monitoring temperature and humidity, deficiencies in airflow, um, you know, that demand controlled uh, interoperability with ventilation systems to regulate air exchange, um, understanding temperature and IQ sensing through in different spaces and zones. Um, so uh, there's more and more um, sophistication of understanding around the fact that, you know, we have these HVAC zones in our spaces and we can also have IAQ related zones uh, in our homes. Um, and then um, also um, we were interested to see that there was a lot of chatter around uh, sensors at air intake vents um, to mitigate outdoor pollution actually coming into the space. Um, that was a little bit of a surprise application for us um, because we didn't know that people really were starting to think about that. I think some of the um, messaging around the fact that we spend 90% of our time indoors and, uh, you know, we have these unhealthy indoor spaces uh, is starting to permeate the market and starting to help people think more and more about, um, you know, what uh, those risk mitigation factors are. I mentioned codes earlier, and um, we are already starting to see IAQ-related codes ratcheting up. Um, certainly, we have CARB in California. Um, both California and New York are starting to create some specific IAQ-related codes and mandates. Um, and in the 2021 20, uh, code cycle, we um, anticipate seeing some changes around things like, these are just some examples, um, single-family IAQ fans, um, um, you know, where there will be some requirements in uh, ventilation systems, um, again, and, and fans. Uh, we're going to look at some multifamily uh, changes as well and mandates in terms of um, ventilation systems to improve IAQ. Uh, and then we have um, some expected changes around range hoods as well. But again, these are just some examples for this next 2021 code cycle, um, some proposals that are on the table and being considered. But as we uh, continue to progress in terms of IAQ-related research and testing and proof points, we are absolutely going to start seeing some pretty rapid changes and adoption of uh, enhanced codes and, and regulations. Um, this one's meant to have a little bit of fun. <laughs> You know, histor this is actually a quote that we took from an article with cognition. We can drill all the way down to see specific articles, blogs, uh, social media posts um, that comprise the trends that we're tracking. And so as I was looking through uh, co the content, I came across uh, an article that, and I pulled this quote from that article, which I really love. And basically the long and the short of it is that, um, you know, historically no one really understood Understood uh, IAQ or when uh, pollution exists within a home and a building. You know, we were kind of just breathing whatever it was that we were breathing and kind of closing our eyes and hoping that we would, you know, stay okay. Um, but as awareness has um, grown about toxins and particulates and dust and VOCs, et cetera, in homes and buildings, um, you know, we really can't ignore the issue anymore. And I love this, uh, the end, the, the last sentence, ignorance is a strategy but not a defense. Um, and so fortunately, 
we're now seeing a lot of different ways to solve for indoor air quality. Uh, the first is, you know, just, and, and again, these are trends that we're tracking uh, within cognition. So these are not just us, um, you know, kind of saying that we think we know this, but we actually have proof points um, that are showing that there's greater, greater situational awareness, uh, both in the residential and the commercial spaces about understanding um, IAQ and understanding accurate IAQ um, realities within homes and buildings, uh, health risks, productivity issues, et cetera. Um, and that's particular, particularly because we do have some advanced sensors and monitors that offer real-time data. Um, we're also seeing a lot more risk mitigation, uh, both in, again, new and retrofits, uh, enhanced specification of healthy, low or no VOCs, fixtures, uh, finishes, materials, furniture, et cetera. Um, we're starting to see more of a focus on and, and really an understanding of how to keep air clean through proper ventilation. Um, we like to say, you know, H, in the HVAC term, uh, v, you know, is kind of the missing link uh, in terms of proper ventilation. So fortunately, um, we're seeing more and more understanding of what proper ventilation means, um, more understanding of uh, fresh air exchange, what it means, how often to do it, how to do it, what kinds of systems to use, et cetera. Um, and then, of course, we're seeing these automated integrated technologies um, like some of the interoperable um, products and systems and devices that I mentioned earlier, whether it's uh, a sensor that connects with a vent fan or applications, more advanced applications that we're starting to see where HVAC systems can talk with windows and open windows for fresh air exchange when IQ levels hit, um, you know, certain um, thresholds that are no longer safe or healthy. And then... Uh, understanding that ongoing monitoring and management, right? So it's not just about specifying healthy materials on the front end, um, but really understanding how to um, uh, have that ongoing monitoring and management to keep IAQ healthy on an ongoing basis. From a messaging and a marketing standpoint, um, we're seeing a lot of success uh, around positive messaging. I think that, um, you know, for the last several years, there's been a lot of doom and gloom <laughs> messaging around IAQ. Um, you know, we spend so much time indoors and, you know, your home is unhealthy and your kids are going to get sick and get AD ADD and asthma. And granted, that's true, right? But um, what we're starting to see is more of an emphasis on the positive um, uh, messaging around IAQ. So some empowering messaging, like take control of your indoor air, uh, be preventative, be proactive, understand tips uh, for improving IAQ, um, whether that's eliminating sources, uh, in, you know, improving intella uh, intelligent ventilation, certainly having that monitoring in place. Um, as I mentioned early, I, earlier, IAQ um, within the minds of homeowners and home buyers is really perceived under that bucket of health and wellness. Um, and so some positive messages that we're seeing through cognition that are really um, uh, succeeding and catching on is certainly, you know, keeping your family healthy, reducing allergies, and maintaining a comfortable home. Uh, as you saw earlier, those are three of the main market drivers and, and reasons for uh, homeowners and home buyers to pay attention. Um, so we're seeing that when manufacturers and even building professionals are incorporating those three messages into their IAQ related stories, um, it's really, you know, uh, resonating. Uh, there's a very positive sentiment for those messages across all audience segments and across all geographies. And then interestingly, we're seeing some tangential <laughs> benefits introduced. Um, so uh, like, for example, for HVAC uh, manufacturers, um, there's absolutely a performance uh, and a cost savings message, um, you know, by changing your filters, by cleaning your ducts. A homeowner can not only prolong the life of their mechanical systems, but also uh, keep energy costs down by enabling those mechanical systems to um, to perform at maximum efficiency. Um, so I'm going to just shift for a few minutes in back into um, cognition um, because I would be remiss in this webinar since we specifically invited 
um, our manufacturing partners uh, to, um, to to join us. I'd be remiss if I wasn't uh, covering um, some of the capabilities of Cognition. Um, we've spent, as I said, a couple of years building Cognition to be very refined in terms of the value and the benefit that we can provide uh, to our clients and to our partners. Um, and we're able to not only offer this really sophisticated data and intelligence, um, but utilize our domain expertise to turn that intelligence into meaningful and actionable um, uh, business recommendations and ideas. Um, so, you know, we're really different than other data providers, whether those are social listening tools or um, even some of the, you know, kind of uh, more sophisticated market trend trackers because we're able to provide data insights but then tie that into custom content generation and content marketing and deploy those through our media channels. Um, and what we found, fortunately, is that we're able to provide really useful business intelligence to our clients that help them make better decisions with respect to marketing, product development, business development, even M&A strategy, all the way through to increasing the efficacy of their sales efforts. And then fortunately, um, because of our expansive reach, we're able to not only gather data from that leading edge market, but then uh, distribute some of the deliverables that we create uh, through Cognition, transforming the data into, again, things like custom content and content marketing through our channels to reach um, the leading edge uh, consumer and progressive building professional audience that we have. Um, I mentioned this a little bit, but Cognition is very uniquely positioned because we synthesize the best of a few segments where a lot of our manufacturer partners um, might work with disparate uh, agencies or research firms. They may get you know, market insights, so data, information about brand positioning, customer segmentation, et cetera, say from an, uh, an agency or a um, a uh, consulting firm or research firm. They may have one or more social listening tools that they utilize. Uh, they may uh, track, get tracking and insights from, um, you know, uh, platforms like, say, Cision or Meltwater, and then they may get business intelligence from, again, agencies or consulting firms. But Cognition really synthesizes all of that together and streamlines both um, the human time uh, that it takes to kind of bring those elements together to help make more informed business decisions, but also the financial spend. Um, and so we're really able to empower our clients um, through this integrated process um, to make those more informed business decisions, to understand their target audiences, purchase drivers, behavioral patterns, uh, sentiment and engagement trends. Um, to increase their engagement and influence with their key audience segments, and then to really optimize their media spend through content marketing, custom content, advertising, outreach, et cetera. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot of different ways that we can apply cognition in conjunction with our clients, whether it's developing a marketing campaign, launching a new product, um, making decisions about business growth, customer segmentation, uh, looking at brand comparisons and brand positioning, um, and um, synthesizing technology platforms, um, et cetera. So um, lots of ways to customize a cognition experience. Um, and then finally, um, we look at cognition as a budget optimization tool. Um, we know that our clients are spending a lot of time and money on uh, data on market research, on um, you know human resources, again, to synthesize all this data together, and then on media purchases. And we're really able to streamline that whole process to increase productivity, increase ROI, and increase the efficacy of um, campaigns and outreach. Um, so that is um, that's what I have for you all today. I am happy to take any questions that you have. Uh, there is a chat uh, function um, in the uh, GoToWebinar dashboard that you should see. So um, I've got a couple of questions here. 
Um, but I really, you know, encourage you, if you have any questions, we have about 13 minutes, and um, I would be happy to uh, answer any questions that you may have. So um, I think that um, I'll start with a question here that I have from Jason. Um, Jason asks, uh, why do we think that there's such an exploding interest in IAQ and why now? Um, and so, you know, what we've seen is that um, the, con you know, kind of the, the concept of sustainable living, healthy living has evolved over the years. Um, you know, 10 years ago, if people were even thinking about it, they were oftentimes thinking about energy. That was really kind of the leading market driver with respect to sustainability. But as I said earlier, um, you know, it really, uh, we, we've solved a lot for energy. Um, and so I think that as homeowners have become more sophisticated in their understanding of sustainable living, as building professionals have um, continued to um, become more sophisticated in their uh, building practices and approaches, as codes have, en have enhanced, we're starting to see more and more of a focus on topics like indoor air quality, water, and connected living. That's actually why, <laughs> just as an aside, we've chosen those three topics uh, for webinars over the next couple of weeks. So again, we certainly encourage all of you to um, participate in those. Um, but you know what we're also seeing is that some of the messaging around um, IAQ uh, is really starting to hit home, um, along with really people recognizing the fact that um, ailments uh, in you know that uh, within their family, asthma, ADD, and kids um, is really proving to be a function of poor IAQ. Um, I think as homes have become tighter and tighter um, because of enhanced building science practices. You know, the flip side of that is that, you know, we haven't been as effective, we've been more effective in making homes tight than we have been in solving for indoor air quality issues, mold, humidity, um, you know, et cetera. So I think that, um, uh, you know, there's some proof points and some very real understanding uh, that IAQ is, uh, there's a real sense of urgency uh, around uh, IAQ. In fact, um, I, uh, as I mentioned earlier, I, I read through the um, content and the comments uh, that uh, we collect through uh, cognition, and one of the comments was uh, around IAQ is that poor indoor air quality is the largest environmental and health threat that we currently face. Um, so I think that, um, you know, clearly there's just many different drivers that have um, contributed to uh, that um, exploding interest in IAQ. <clears throat> I, uh, I actually don't have uh, any other questions here in my chat box, so Again, I'm going to give about 30 seconds to any of you that do have other questions. And if not, then we can sign off and um, we'll look forward to seeing you uh, next week on our next webinar about water. All right then, so uh, again, thank you all so much for your time. Uh, our next webinar will be next Wednesday, September 4th, same time, uh, one o'clock Eastern time. And uh, look forward to uh, having you participate in that webinar as well. Take care and uh, last but not least, if you um, would like to learn more about how cognition can help your business, I encourage you please to reach out to me or to Craig Cole, our publisher, 
Uh, you can see our email addresses on the screen there, and uh, we'd love to show you a, a demo and take you through the full Cognition deck and talk specifically about how Cognition can help your business and help you to make um, better and more informed business decisions. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day.